Yeah, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview of just some of the products we have that uh, I know you're here for the asterisk at, for Astrakhan, and but you can see some of the products we do on the other side of the house and how we kind of use that on our business side. So at any time, feel free to, I'll have a time at the end to allow you to ask questions, but if there's something relevant when I'm at the slide, feel free to raise your hand. I don't mind trying to answer the question, and if I don't know the answer, Julie will hunt it down for me. <laughs> okay, just, all right. So here's a quick glance at our product. So obviously, first we have Asterisk, which everything is based on. It's our open source platform, and from that, like, we've created these other products, and like many of you, you've created phone systems, voicemail systems, just all kinds of things that you can do with Asterisk. So, so we've done the same thing. Uh, the next thing is Switchfox. How many people in here are familiar with Switchfox? So about half, there you go. And there's Allison, her, her voice is actually on the Switchfox system. So, all right, so we'll just, we'll kind of go through the, each of these products. So first, again, Asterisk, the open source platform, and then Switchbox is what we've created uh, software with that. So with Switchbox, we've got three different deployment methods. We have on-premises, that would be our appliances, which we'll take a look at here shortly. So if, you, if a customer is wanting hardware on the premise, you can go that route. We also have it virtualized, so it is just a software package. You can download it and load it into your VMware and use it virtualized. Or if you wanted to go hosted and use our cloud services, here in the States we have a data center in Atlanta and we provide hosted services that way. So we have three different methods for you to choose from. And so for the on-premises, we have four new appliances. These just came out about a month or so ago. We have the, the top one is the lower end box. It's called an E510. It supports, um, it supports like 50 users and actually it's, uh, yeah, it's like 50 users. And then the next one is the 520, which would be like 100 users. And then the bottom two, we say up to 600 users. And the difference in the two, the third one, the 530, is just a, just a regular server, but the, the next one, the 540, has redundant hard drives and redundant power supplies. So it has hardware redundancy built in to that bottom one. So it gives you a mix of sizes, different number of users that you want to use. So you can pick and choose that if you wanted to use the premise, premises uh, system. So why would someone use an on-premises deployment? So some people actually have the money and they'd rather do a capital investment just a one time, pay for it and be done with it instead of having that monthly recurring charge. Maybe they uh, have enough bandwidth. Uh, bandwidth is cheap the, nowadays and they want to be able to just, you know, again, control this themselves. Sometimes people like to have that load, just, you know, have the PBX on site so they can control that and they can configure it. If there's issues going on, they can troubleshoot it a lot quicker. Some people like just to have that on, they think the quality is better because it's right there all in house. It's using their local area network. And one thing you're gonna see as far as features goes, there's a lot of features built into Switchbox. So a lot of people like to go with the Switchbox appliance because we have conferencing, reporting, call reporting, a lot of features, uh, collaboration. You'll see all these things. I'll go over some features here a little bit later. And also, if you have multiple sites, some people like to have a distributed model where they have systems in multiple sites and they'll peer those together. And we have it in Switchbox. There's a feature we can peer the boxes together, do extension, do extension dialing, and you can see a presence across that peer. So it, to the user, it appears to be one system, even though it's one in each location for redundancy purposes. So our other deployment method was virtualization. So why would someone want to do virtualization? Some companies, uh, most of the companies I see, they've already made a hefty investment in the virtual environment. So they have plenty of room on their servers to load more applications. So that's probably the biggest reason that I see if they've made that investment, they're ready to do that. Also, it reduces uh, capital cost and operating expenses because when you do virtualization, you can oversubscribe your network. You don't have to have one application per server. You just pull your resources and you can share those ac across your applications or your servers. Also, uh, minimize or eliminate downtime. Just in the virtual world, in the VM environment, it has hot failover built in, high availability. 
So you can, where it'll spin up a virtual machine, automatic, so people like that, again, just for the redundancy purposes. And also, as far as IT goes, it's a lot easier for them to manage where they're just having to spin up virtual machines versus having to maintain an actual server per application. And it's, it's faster too, same thing, spinning up the virtual machines is a lot faster just to spin up an, a snapshot of a, an application or a config versus trying to go through and configure an entire system. And it's also easier for centralized management because again, you can throw more resources at this. Even as far as our appliances go, you can, you can as, assign more resources to the VM, the virtual machine versus, versus the appliance that you get. So you can get a little more out of the box. And then the last option there, cloud or our hosted. Some people don't have the upfront cost, so they, they would rather have a lower monthly cost, but just to be a steady stream, just to know exactly what their, their bill is or invoice is each month, so they would rather just take it slow and just pay that monthly charge. Also on our hosted, the minutes are included. So if someone wants it, the service of Switchbox, they get that, but also their minutes are included. Sometimes people will go with hosted because they don't have a large IT staff. And so we're doing all the support, all the maintenance, all the upgrades, so they don't have to worry about even the hardware. If the hardware goes down, that's on us because it's in our data center. And if they need to make um, add moves and changes, they call us and we make those changes for them. And again, I mentioned uh, about the third party. Again, the, the beauty of our cloud product versus the on-premises or virtualization it's the same exact software. We don't have a virtual product, hardware product, and a hosted product separately. They're all exactly the same. Makes it easy for our engineers to do development work so they don't have to maintain different branches. They can just run with exactly the same software, make those features, and they go across the board to everyone. And then also, if you're at a data center, like we're in one of the, what I call a data hotel in downtown Atlanta, where all the main, it's a main pop in Atlanta, the building's got redundant power, redundant feeds from the higher end carriers. So the speed is fast, we've got reliability. So it just makes it nice to have a data center right there in downtown Atlanta. So I've mentioned features in Switchbox. If you haven't quoted Switchbox before, I would say take a look and just see what it looks like to quote Switchbox. One of the things that our resellers really like about our Switchbox product is not only the ease of use, but just how easy it is to quote the product. And you think, well, what does that matter if it's easy to quote? It's not so much for you guys, whether you, it's easy or not, but when you're sitting down with a customer and you've got, they're looking, usually they're comparing quotes between multiple vendors. When you've got one vendor that their quotes might be a page long or two pages long, our quote's just a few, a few line items, hardware, software, maybe a gateway and some phones. Very, very easy. Because we don't license each of the features in the system. Some people say, oh, if you want reporting, that's extra. If you want call recording, that's extra. Some people even charge you extra to uh, terminate a SIP trunk. Everything you see is included. So things like the switchboard, which is the call control panel. So if you've got a call comes in, you can have queue panels up to see who's on the phone, who's taking calls. It gives you some real-time stats on how long they've been talking, how long they've waited in the queue. You can do things like click to dial. So I'm in the sales team, on the sales team, and I manage, I've got a panel that has all the salespeople listed in one panel. So if I wanted to call my director and I see that he's on the phone, I don't want to call him right now because all I'm going to do is get their voicemail and then we'll end up playing phone tag. I can wait and watch when they hang up, click to dial, and then I can call them just to be more efficient. So the switchboard is really nice if you need to do call control, very good for a front desk, administrative assistant, or like I said, even queues, or like maybe small, like small tech support centers and things that you can see a lot of information. We also have soft phones. We have soft phones for Android and Apple that we've developed. So it has that same look and feel that you would see on the switchboard, also on the phones. So if you, I'm, I'm gonna invite you again probably several times to come by our booth and see these things live. But one of the things you can see is the features that we put on the phone and in switchboard and the soft phone, we've tried to keep that consistent across all three. Some people like me, I have my desk phone and my monitor up all the time. <clears throat> 
but maybe there might be someone that doesn't have their switchboard open, but they still want the features, they have those on the phone. So we do a lot across uh, where, where the features are integrated across all three product lines, so that way no matter what you're using, you have those same features. And then we have something called converged phones, is where if you have like a mobile device, cell phone, desk phone, at the office, maybe one at the home, so maybe you've got three or four devices or more, you can actually converge those together so they act like one. So you can do call rules where you can direct the calls where they need to go. If you make outbound calls, it gets reported as your main number. Your call, caller ID gets distributed or presented as the main number. So it doesn't matter that you're calling from the soft phone, it still looks like your desk phone. So if you're out there playing golf and your boss thinks you're, he might think you're at your desk, but you're really out somewhere else. So, so that's nice. Uh, <laughs> the call queues, like I said, that's built in as well. There's a lot of information you get from call queues, a lot of reports that we capture. And then we've got, I won't read all of these, but um, conferencing, presence, music on hold. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff up here. So these are just some of the features that are included. And again, it is included. We don't have to worry about quoting and you know, another line item. So it's nice for the customer j just to see that everything they see, they get. And they don't have to worry about picking and choosing what they want. They can just use what they want. It's also easy to use. So. If I know a lot of you guys are Asterisk developers and you're used to building your own, you know, own custom PBXs and things, but there's a lot of like IT people out there that might not have Asterisk developers on staff. It's so that we have a nice GUI, makes it easy for them to go through. And you as a reseller, we actually have some, res some of our strongest Asterisk resellers do both. Because the, again, one of the beauties of Switchbox is for the smaller instances, it's cookie cutter. They don't have to worry about writing, you know, doing a custom development for each, you know, each customer. So for maybe a small set of customers that standard features, they just do the cookie cutter thing and they throw out Switchbox and then the customers that need something special, they'll use the asterisk. So they actually do both. They, they use both sides of our product line. But the GUI makes it really hand, handy to to use, we have something called guided tours on each page on the user and the admin section. You can go in and see the highlighted feature of that release. So it'll take you through and show you where it's used, how it's used. Uh, setting up extensions, very easy. You just click buttons and fill in the blank. I mean, you don't have to know very much. Or you don't have to know any syntax, no command structure at all. Just if you can read and fill in a blank, you're good. Good to go and it has a built-in help file, and that's one of the things I like. You don't have to weed through a big manual, click on the question mark, and it gives you all the information about that section right there that you're in. And then we say it's custom, it's, you, there's customization and flexibility, and what we mean by that is it is software, it is built on asterisk. We can do lots of features, we can expose more features. We also open it up for external integration. So if you need to do things like Salesforce or extended APIs where some people might have, let's say you're a doctor's office and they want to do appointment reminders where it calls out, you can, you can integrate those types of APIs with Switchbox. We do allow that. So even though you're going through the GUI to configure it, we still open it up because again, you being developers, you want to create that custom fill and there might be something that your customer needs that you want to make unique for this customer. You can do that using the integration. And then standards based, we don't do anything proprietary. It's all stand, uh, based on standards, which is nice. You, you can, if you did have to mix and match with other pieces of equipment, and they're using standard protocols, you're good to go. So the next thing on our little loop here, telephone. So, so one of the things we did a long time ago, we wanted to have more integration with the phone sets. So we decided several years ago, let's build our own phones because we want complete control over the experience that the customer has. We didn't want to just a few features here and there that some of the other manufacturers want, wanted to give us. So we built our own. These are completely designed by us, 100%. So they're not OEMs. We have Three basic models, and actually I show the 60, 62. The difference between the two, the 60 is 100 base T, where the 62 is a gig port, drop port on the back. But the, the main difference is, if you look at the top right corner of each one, the 60, 62 is a two-line phone. The 65 is a six-line phone. And you'll notice right below the six green buttons, there's a scroll bar. So what you can do there is scroll through 20 different screens. 
So if you think just most people only have one extension that takes up line key number one, I've got five additional buttons, 20 pages, so that gives me 100 contacts. So I can scroll through those, I don't know 100 people, but if I did, I could put those in there and I could monitor them real time and see what their status is, if they're on the phone, things like that. So I can do that with the D65. And the last one there, the D80, is a touch screen. And on that, you can actually swipe. And on the page, you get 24 entries, like speed dials, rapid dials, and you can scroll real easy. So if you need to see, it can also do up to 100 contacts. So it's really nice. So I would say come by the booth and take a look at our phones. The color phones are really pretty, and they've got all those features of the switchboard. So like I said, depending on what you use, it's fully integrated, and there's things like changing your, your presence, which may not sound like much, but when you converge your phones, it doesn't matter if I'm at my desk, using my switchboard, I've got my soft phone converged, sometimes I'm running to the airport and I forget to change my status, it's like, ah, no, no problem, I get on my cell phone, change my status, and that way it selects the proper call rules. So again, it's all integrated, very nice. And then another product line we have are gateways and telephony cards. So, in the virtual world, there is no physical connection, so you do need some type of gateway to convert your, if you're connecting to the PSTN, you'll need to convert maybe your PRIs or T1s to SIP to get to gate, um, to SwitchFox, excuse me. We also make cards. So again, asterisk, you're building your own custom servers, you're gonna need a way to connect to the carrier. So let's take a look at, we'll, we'll go through and we'll talk about, first we'll talk about the gateways, then we'll get to the cards. So the gateways, we actually have four different models. We have a single port, a dual, quad, and octal gateway. So it just depends on what you need. That can be T1, E1, PRI ports, and it converts those to SIP. And here's just one application. The most common is converting PSTN to SIP. So it might be that you have um, a SwitchFox. Our new appliances don't have card slots because they're really Again, you can come see those. They're, actually, they're smaller than the cards, which I find really fascinating now. So the smallest system looks like you've taken two small boxes and put those together. But anyway, you need to convert that signal from the PSTN or connectivity to the PSTN to SIP so you can get that to SwitchFox. Another real common one is maybe the customer's like, well, we want to start saving some money, but we really can't do a forklift on our system yet. So I want to keep this, the PBX that I have today but it's older, it doesn't support SIP. So they'll take our gateway and then they'll actually do SIP from the carrier, hopefully Digium, it's a Digium SIP trunk I hope, and then they convert that to either a T1 or PRI to their legacy system. So that's really common too and then that way the customer can start to realize savings a lot quicker and then hopefully over time start to migrate over. And that's actually another application that I'm not even showing up here is migrating. Some people will, again, not do a complete forklift at one time, they'll have the legacy PBX, they'll also have SwitchBox attached to this, and then over time just buy new phones slowly, and then over time just slowly um, scale down and remove the old system. So that's another application that we don't even show up here. Our telephony cards, we have analog, we make Foreign Exchange Office, FXO, and then FXS, Foreign Exchange Subscribers, and those are color-coded up here. So you have the base card, depending on what you need. The, the red ones are FXO, the green ones are FXS. We have four, eight, and 24 port cards. So depending on what you need to terminate there, you can mix and match those. And then we also have digital cards. We have one, two, four, and eight port cards. If you get the eight port card, we actually have like a splitter. So you don't actually have eight RJ45 connectors, it actually is four and it's the dongle split it out, but you can still get up to eight terminations if you need that. And then the last piece here, SIP trunking. So again, kind of back to our hosted model, we do have the hosted seats, but again, if you're doing your custom asterisk builds or if you're doing SwitchFox and you wanna go SIP trunking, we do provide SIP trunking to that server. So we're having really good success with this. We're, our hosted product is really coming along and this, like I said, the SIP trunking is growing every day. Some of the features, it's scalable, it's streamlined, so you can put this, like I just mentioned, it could be SwitchFox asterisk or another product that supports SIP. We can, we can also, it's, we're a carrier, so we can actually port numbers. We can give you blocks of DIDs if you need them. We actually support multiple codecs. 
So just like a typical VoIP provider, if you need those services, we can provide those. And then this is just a little PowerPoint that I showed of a network diagram showing all these pieces put together. We can see our hosted if you needed that, SIP trunk in, or PRI from the carrier to the gateway with a switch box with the phones hanging off in the mobile. So just kind of showing everything at once there. So let's. Okay. All right, so now I just wanted to open the floor up for questions to see if anybody had any questions on any of our products or services or anything like that. Pardon me? What's the warranty on the on-site hardware? It's standard, it's one year, and you can uh, upgrade that to three or five. So you, you have options, that you get one, you can upgrade it to two or five, I mean, to three or five. Yes? How long have your uh, new phones been deployed? Probably a couple months, I guess. The, maybe, maybe earlier, whoops, things are crazy on me. The, um, the D80's been out for just a couple months, but I think the other ones have been out probably maybe mid-year, I guess, or a little earlier. So they've been out for quite a while. The 62 and 65 have been out. So, yeah, we'll have the phones and the switch box, the switchboard, we'll have all that set up in the booth. So if you haven't seen it, we can do a demonstration for you and show you what that looks like real time. So. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? So, did I? I felt like I went. I went way too fast. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay.